Hey, it's starting. I started? I, I think it know. started. I have no idea either. So I just stare blankly <laughs> until you tell let's, me. Let's, uh, well, let's, let's, uh, send, let's send the tweet. I think it's happening now. Hi, everyone. Hey. Welcome to Watch It Play. My name is Rodney Smith. And I'm Pat McDonald. And nothing has gone wrong this evening as we prepare for what is one of several live shows we've conducted already. Oh, I thought you were going to say we're doing several live shows tonight. <laughs> it feels like we already have. Believe me. Yeah. I, I'm just going to take a quick look over at the stream because I, I suspect it's not working. It seems to be working. Okay. Hopefully someone in the chat will shortly tell us that the audio is fine, and then we will proceed. Uh, oh, yes. No audio would be bad. Sound is okay. Sound yeah. is okay. Okay. Thank you. Everyone. I like that it's okay and not great <laughs> yeah, or no, excellent. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's always the sounds. It's adequate. The, the sound here is usually not great because of the echo and everything, and mm. we had real problems with that today. I don't know what happens. Uh, we've done this multiple times, and every time I sit down, it's like I first, I'm first i just first learning how to use a PC computer. It's perfect, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, okay, so thank you, everyone. I just, uh, I'll just quickly, I just I noticed one of my friends in the chat. I want to say hi to Dave Finkel. Uh, I hope your son Gary's doing well, and glad to have you here. Uh, Dave, uh, I recently uh, met up with when I was on my little trip to uh, Los Angeles. We played a bunch of games and had some fun. Mm. Good, good times there. Let's have some more good times here in this live show. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done one in so long, and I've got like a whole list of things to go over, and I've got two games. Right, that's a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, got a, I've got two games we want to play. Uh, so let's start at the top. I did want to mention quickly, I did have some surgery. If you, if you saw my announcement video about that, I received a lot of very nice comments. People were very, you know, hope everything goes okay, wishing me well. Thank you, everyone. It was very comforting. I've never had surgery before. Me neither. Uh, me neither. I've had like in a clinic surgery, but not like under the lights and what's doctors. The, what's and, the term? Elective surgery? Uh, no. Well, this wasn't elective. Well, this was sort of elective. I don't know. Well, we don't want to go into the details. <laughs> you don't need to know. <laughs> Stop prying into my personal business. No, it was uh, it was my first. Time. I've never had a broken arm. I've never had anything really kind of go wrong with me. So uh, this was. I can fix that. <laughs> You've been trying. Uh, it it uh, it went well. Though. The procedure went well. I'm on the other side of it. I'm recovering. So again, thanks everyone. And Pep has been a fantastic help because. I wasn't able to really move around a lot, and so you've been lifting everything for me, <laughs> shooting video. The videos we shot for like Leaders of Euphoria, I just sort of sat there, and you did all the camera work all and camera moved things good. around for me, and I just tried to talk and be a little bit animated. So surgery went well. Thank you, everyone, again for the kind comments. I want to mention uh, the fundraiser, uh, our, our last fundraiser. All the fulfillment is done. Uh, it's been done for a while, but I know some people were have, uh, had not received the promos yet and contacted me, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. And so far, everyone, as far as I know, I've managed to sort out. I think the, the mail system lost some of our envelopes or something. If you have not good. received your promos yet, please do get in touch with me at watchitplayed.live.com. The only thing we haven't fulfilled yet is the uh, live gaming marathon. That's true. Which we're clearly not equipped to do in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> If preparing for these has been anything. We're doing it right now. Uh, we are going to, this is still going to happen. It's definitely still going to happen. Uh, we had wanted to get a couple other people, do some practice days, make sure the games are going to work okay. And it's just been, uh, scheduling four people has been a, a bit of a challenge. It has and, been. And just even finding the time for us to get together and work on it has been a little bit of a challenge. It feels like there's always another video for the show proper to do, but we really, we will fulfill that commitment, I promise. There's like an event here and a trip there, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just you got to find a, a time where those Oh, mesh. that's that perfect moment. We will find that perfect moment, though. Uh, I have a note here, Peptastic. Oh, that's right. I, just I like to call myself that. <laughs> I want to say, Pep has been fantastic. Uh, speaking of the last fundraiser, one of the, the, the big stretch goals there was to allow Pep to come and work on the show full time, and it has been such a help, tremendous help. Uh, mentally, it's kind of a relief. Uh, we'll, we'll, sh we'll spend the day shooting, and then I'll give the editing to you, and I can just go relax, and you keep working. It's yeah, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just it means that our days are broken up differently. Sharing the burden just makes a big, big difference. And like I said, even just things around when I had my surgery, the show could keep going because I had someone to help. Right now, you've been going through the uh, old thumbnails. Yes. Back in the day and watch it play when I was first doing the, the first episodes, YouTube would just pop up three frames and let you pick one. So there was often thumbnails of me doing, or, you know, just weird random things. Yeah. And so we're going through and we're cleaning them up and bringing them up to date to the current thumbnail format that we're working on. So perhaps we a big help with that. Uh, well, let me think what else I want to tell you. Oh, the, today the, we launched the uh, gameplay for Zombicide Green Horde, the Kickstarter that just uh, went live today. At, yeah. 
four four o'clock our time, I think three p.m. Eastern or uh, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it funded in seven minutes. Uh, obviously, all due to our video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was all us. <laughs> yes. No, uh, it was. Uh, well, the videos. Longer than seven minutes anyway. <laughs> That's true. People no. get halfway through the video and just like, stop talking, I'll buy it. <laughs> I'll buy it, just stop. Um, and Simon reached out to us to, to work on that gameplay video, and it was, a, it was a nice honor, and so we hoped it was helpful. We wanted to try to combine it being a little bit of a tutorial and also showing the gameplay. So even if you've never played a zombie side game before, you could kind of follow along and see what the new features are, right? Yeah. So hopefully, the feedback has been good so far, so I hope, hope you've enjoyed that. But today we also released uh, the Near and Far gameplay too. That's been fun to do. We've been adventuring oh, yes. in the, the, the land of near and far, and I hope you guys are enjoying coming along with us. I got some comments. People were confused today. Uh-oh. Uh, because normally when we have the viewers help us, they help one of us. And the first episode, they helped me. In this episode, they helped you. Someone posted like, wait, am I helping Pep now? Who, who am I rooting for? <laughs> well, we just like to mix it up and keep things interesting. So. Maybe we need to break people off into Team Rodney and Team <laughs> right. Pep. And then start the video just be like... If you're going to give advice, you probably don't want to give it to one of us. That's right. So, yeah, you can decide. You can waffle back and forth and just end up siding with the winner if you want in the long run. Uh, don't forget, we will have questions in the comments, and maybe some of you are already leaving them, which is awesome. Uh, a good tip. I saw people already giving it. If you have a question, put question in. All caps. All caps. It really helps it pop out. So we, so you guys can continue to chat with each other, but then we can go back through and find the, the real questions that we want to pull out. So. Uh, oh, another announcement that happened was Tabletop Showcase. This is a, a new venture, <laughs> Tabletop Showcase, a new venture that I'm doing with uh, five other board game media friends, uh, really just dear, dear friends of mine, and looking for a way that we could work together on a project. And sort of Tabletop Showcase was the idea that we came up with. So it's going to be, there's an announcement video, you can check it out. I'll maybe put a link in the description below if you, if you want to look at it. And, and that will be releasing the week after Origins, which is coming up, the next convention that I'm attending. You won't be at that one. I won't be at that one. And that's uh, that's not next week, the week after, right? I think, I think you're right. Week I'm after. super excited for Origins. I love Origins. Lots of gaming. It's got – it's a slightly bigger convention, so it does have the retail space and the all the publishers to go see and all the new games to go gaga over, but also just lots and lots of gaming with people. I'm looking forward to doing a lot of that. Uh, let me think. What else can I tell you? Oh, uh, we have a box opening thing to do. Before we do that, though, I've got another something I just wanted to show. Yes. This was kind of a fun little thing. I got. You guys might have seen this uh, for the game Mass More, another CMON Kickstarter. They created a miniature for Luke the Lucky in support of Watch It Play. This was a really nice initiative they did because basically, uh, after they took out the cost of making the miniature, the proceeds of that, for anyone who bought this add-on, it came back to Watch It Play, which was really, really helpful. So uh, one of our uh, kind viewers, Joseph, uh, who I met at the Cool Me or Not Expo, I think two years ago, and the year after that, I wasn't there this year, he got this and he painted up the Lucky Luke miniature. Now, I don't have the autofocus turned on these cameras, so I won't be able to sort of zoom in and show you this, but maybe, maybe if I go here, yeah, I, this might sort of give you oh. a sense of it. It's not too bad. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the wonderful paint job. I just showed this to Luke. Uh, before I came here, and he was super, super jazzed. So I'm going to give that to Luke to put on his uh, bookshelf in his room. And uh, thanks, Joseph, for painting that up. That's really, really super cool. And he also uh, painted up another figure here to go in, uh, I think, is this, gosh, is this uh, Darkness or Zombie Side? Remind let me, see, me. Let me see. You take a look. I thought There's he a said... note in here. There's a note in here from Joseph. Sorry that you're just looking at the table. Let me get the headshot back here. Um, Oh no, it's it's for yeah, one of the zombie side games. Is it for yeah, one? Yeah, but yeah. it's actually um, it's it's guts. This is it's guts. This is guts from Berserk. I don't know if he's normally. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I think he just you could use this in Maybe zombie side, but I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure this is the actual guts. Either way, this is yeah. a real treat, and it's always. I mean, since I we love him. <laughs> you love swords. Oh yeah, and I, I love I love one hand and great swords. Okay. Like the mountain, I don't like the character of the mountain, obviously, yeah. in Game of Thrones. Right, right. He, he's a little he's, miserable. He's a bad character, but <laughs> the fact that he one hands great swords, okay. love that. that. That's always. So he's not all bad. He's not all you bad. You found something to admire in him. That's a silver lining thing. That's yeah. good. That's, yeah, it's good. You should try to do that with everybody. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot. This is Listen, since we started doing Watch It Played six years ago now, people have been really generous with their time, their talents, and sending little gifts along, and these things to just kind of brighten your day. So, thanks, Joseph, for that. Um, okay, we do have a game to show you. It's laid out here in front of you. This is a, this is called Beasts of 
Balance. Did that not uh, be subverted? No, and I commonly call it be <laughs> subverted. Um, this is a game that the, the publisher reached out just to see if we'd be interested. I kind of informed them, look, we don't do reviews on the show. But I was super curious about this game. I thought, well, this might be something we could show at least during a live show, if not doing like a full, you know, watch it play treatment thing on it. I thought maybe this would be something of interest to you guys to check out. Have you got it all set up and sort of ready to go there? We could, yeah. Oh, yeah, we have to turn. That's right. So this is the plinth that comes with Beasts of Balance. And you turn this on, and uh, it immediately connects with an app that you download for free. Did it connect? Did I think it, it did. Welcome. Oh, we're having some trouble locating the plinth of life. Lovely. Um, it's fine. It's going to be fine. It's, uh, try, try again. Is it, really, it's... <laughs> Despite the fact that it's not happening right now, normally, oh, you don't have Bluetooth turned on? That oh, would be why. You yeah. know why? Yeah. So I thought, you know, it would be obnoxious what? if I kept getting notifications on my iPad while I was trying to play a game. So I set it to airplane, air, airplane mode, but yeah. I forgot that that it turns off also Bluetooth. turns off. You can keep Bluetooth. airplane mode on. Airplane mode? <laughs> Just, yeah. I'll turn my Wi-Fi off okay. instead. Okay, Bluetooth is on. All right, so I'll turn this back on. So again, nothing wrong there, just something wrong with that. Okay, we ready? <laughs> Let's see if it connects this time. It's oh, do you loading want me to turn it a little bit. Yeah, that's way. that's good. That way you that, can see that it. That way at least one of us knows what's going on here. I can watch there it. There we go, it's working. So again, free app, and this is what comes in the in the base box. There are some extras you can pick up separately. So we will tap the begin and we will try to sort of talk you through what's happening here. There's a tutorial that you can follow. But essentially, we're going to be taking these figures and stacking them. What would we compare this to? I don't want to say Jenga, because Jenga starts with a stack and you rebuild. Um, mm, yes. Uh, is, uh, Rhino Hero style? Kind of. You're building a tower. Yeah. And you can put these however you like on the tower. You can stack them any way. Well, let's just show them. Okay, let's do that. What, what do you want to start with? Should we start with the crazy eagle thing? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. All right, sure. So the way that you tell the plinth what you're doing is there's a little uh, reader. You just tap it to the front. Boop. And it says, hey, there's a there's an eagle you've scanned, and you want to put that on the thing. And I go, yeah, I do. And so it will sense as soon as it's like this. Hey, it's your turn. Okay. You do whatever you want. So, and it's, it's a cooperative game, so like you can just take turns back and forth. Now, this uh, animal creates a certain number of stars based on its size. And so we've created an eagle in our little world here, and it has a strength, we'll call it, or a health of six. And now we're going to scan something else. You're going to put that on next? I'm going to put the shark on. Yeah, the shark is great. It's really um, a really wonderful thing to balance stuff on. All right, so you're going to put the shark. There's I'm, some room over here. Yeah, yeah but you're going to nudge it a little bit? Okay. Yeah, I want right. to. So the shark is also a six-value creature. So it's going to go into the water here, and now we have this shark. And it says, hey, you've created a shark. Isn't that exciting? Happy. Duh. All right. They're both the same health, so that's good. Balance. We've achieved Balance. Let's show them bad. Let's show them imbalance? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? The warthog? Let's, Let's do the warthog. it. I'm going to put him up. So we got to scan him first. Scan him first. All right. And we've turned the sound off on this thing. Which, do you want to turn the sound oh, off? Oh, yeah. Let's, Let's turn the sound off. Let's just turn it off. Okay. All right. I don't think it'll be too obnoxious. All right. And then we'll just put this on. I'm going to put him here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is uh, three. This is a health of three. So three stars coming down. We create a little warthog here. He's now on the land. We've got a problem though, because now there's two creatures that are really popular and strong, and this one is, and he gets a little jealous. So his three health just dropped to two. Let's turn it down just a little bit. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like I'm kinda, in like a club or something. You're kind of shouting over. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, so that that means every time that we add something new, all of the animals that are not the highest health animal will lose one point. And at the bottom here, we see a total of all their health, and that's kind of our collective score. So we want to have a higher health on all of our animals and keep them from losing their health. You want to put Let's some... show them how these work. Uh, let's maybe show them this one first. Okay. Fine. This is the, uh, well, I forget what this is called. Let's, let's scan it. It'll it, tell us. It'll tell us, yeah. This is the cross. All right. So you have three of these cross pieces. Let's precariously perch oh this goodness. on top so of the shark. <laughs> okay. So we, we, that's fine. It'll be fine. So what this is going to do is going to take two of the animals, cross them together, and create a new creature. So we now have a, a hog wing. A hog wing. <laughs> so we put the eagle and the hog together. And all the, and this is the most powerful. It's eight. So all the other creatures lost a little bit of their health there. And we're getting a warning because the warthog is at one health. It's going to die. Well, we got to fix that. We should fix that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are three categories that the animals are divided into. Water, air, and 
Earth. Earth, right. So we have other objects here, these kind of oddly shaped things. These can provide health to the animals based on the, the color. So green is Earth, is there right? And there you've got division. So this is an Earth and an air. Okay. What do we do? We want to just do two Earth, or do you want to split it up a little bit amongst the uh, everything? You no, know. I think let's do the two Earth. Okay, two Earth. So each side will provide two stars to all Earth creatures. So four stars are going to go on all of our Earth creatures here. So uh, let's. I'm going to put this on. You got to scan it first. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. There's the little scan thing. Boop. All right. So I'm going to put that. I'm going to put it on the top here. All right. So now this should drop four. Health onto the warthog, which it has. He's back to health. He's yeah. not going to die. He'll be He's fine good. for a while now. What are you doing? Let's mix the game <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, all right. So this is, I don't know what this is called, but it's its called distraction. It's a miracle, they call it. Uh, oh, that's a terrible idea. That's a less bad idea. <laughs> all right. All right. So this will give some, you notice you put all the points in this cloud area. All right. And what's happening now is all the animals who've lost health, those points instead of just disappearing forever, they get sucked up into the cloud. And that cloud counts towards our total score. So we didn't actually lose any points. We lost them from the animals. We didn't lose them from our collective total, right? We're trying to get the most points. However, tell me what's happening now, Pat. Yeah, so this is where it's going to get really interesting. So go to pick something. Okay, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another animal in, if that's okay with you. I'm going to put a, this octopus thing. All right, so... Now Rodney's going to scan the octopus, and we have to see. There's the sun here. <laughs> yes, I do see the sun. There. So Rodney is going to have to have one finger on the sun okay. while he places. The I'm going to use my thumb just because of the reach here. Okay, and I'm going to put this guy right. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> so that's and then it's fine. And so as long as we complete the objectives it gives us, we keep getting to store our points in the cloud. If, but if we, we fail. They're gone. The cloud points go. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're up to 28 points. We're looking good. This was not... That was a bad idea. <laughs> but I can help you. Oh, I can fix it. Okay. Now we're going to use this. Oh, that's the migrate tool. All right. Yeah. So. so this... Now... I don't think it's scanned. No, I, oh, I stopped. Oh, oh, we have a thing. It says tap all of the full moons. So every now and then across the screen, a little full moon's going to go by. One of us has to be watching. Yeah, you should watch that while I talk. Right. Okay. So... What's interesting, I'm going to use the migrate, but before I do, I'm going to explain how a couple of these little things work. Because sure, there's sure. actually this little firefly that you might not be able to see, but it's slowly jumping oh, around yes, the yes. screen. Right. That is signifying what is getting the effect of certain things. So, for example, this migrate is going to take an animal from where it is and move it to another section. So, like, it could take the shark and put it on the land. Right. The animal it's going to move is going to be the one with the firefly. So if you time it right, you can move the right one. Which um, one do you want to move here? Do you want to move the shark to the land? I think that sounds fun. Uh, actually, I want to move the warthog, warthog to the water, because <laughs> then, All right. so let's wait. we got to time it. Got to get to the warthog. There it is. All right. So now, Pep is going to no, I think I'm gonna, balance now, it. Watch I want to, oh, listen, I'm doing my job. You do your job. Oh, boy. So no, no <laughs> moons went across, so that was fine. As you go later in the game, the moons will start going faster. And sometimes they'll put... Not full. Yeah, it says only full moons. You tap the full moon, so if a half oh, moon or... Oh, the creature. Moon. I didn't see what it was called. Yeah, but anyway, yes, yeah, so you were saying, like, sometimes a half moon will go across, mm -hmm. or crescent moons, so you don't, you can't tap those. The eagle looks like it's going to die. Well, let's help the eagle. I want to show one of these... Uh, let's show maybe fire. Let's show how fire works. Fire, so fire in an air, probably. Fire in an air, okay. Oh, actually... Actually, let's do it. Let's, let's do a uh, fire in a sea. No. No, we, yes, trust me. Oh, fire in sea, yes. Fire in sea. So, blue is... Uh, is water, and then fire is fire. Oh, uh, the camera is starting to uh, Sorry, everybody. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to just look over at the chat, make sure no one's uh, died. Okay, no one's died yet. All right, good. Um, so here's how fire works. Fire will give two energy or two health to wherever the firefly is. Mm -hmm. The blue will give two energy to all water creatures. So this way, if I scan it once it's on the eagle, the eagle will get the fire points, and the two here will go to the water creatures, right? Which will include the little floating warthog thing. All right, this is it. All right, I got it. Uh, oh, is, I'll watch it, the is it giving us a challenge? It didn't give us a challenge this time, so I can just place this. Pep, I'm I'm gonna do this. I'm sure this will be fine, right? All right, so I'll just right. Oh, it's oh. the worst place. It's fine. It's fine. You can hear the app. The, the The plinth is so sensitive. Any adjustment to the weight of it 
it picks it up and starts to say, hey, look out, look out, look out. Because if any of these, if we were to remove any of these objects, it would start saying, no, no, you can't do that. It, it senses if you try to remove something. So now we've got a lot of health on, well, not a lot, but our sea creatures are not dying anymore. Our eagles are in the air. You know what happened? I think we lost our... Oh, we lost bird. our cloud. We oh. must have not been paying attention and missed a moon. I'm sure somebody was watching <laughs> as we were doing it. They're like, hit the moon, hit the moon, hit the moon. We're so sorry. Uh, what, what do we want to put in the air here? Um, I mean, we can get we can get the cloud back if we can get this thing on here. <laughs> okay, I got I got this. And this will probably not. This is probably where our, our demonstration will end. Yeah, let's move this stuff out of the way. Here, actually, actually yeah, here, you know what? You can put it on the side. Well, I was I was gonna purposely this? end the demonstration. Oh, all right. Just just, just, just do, do this one at least. Okay. Uh, this okay. is called the haste. Haste. Oh, I gotta do this one fast. All right. No. It, oh, you after, you, after you complete this, you'll have to do the rest of them fast. Perfect. See, I can't see down it's there. So. Fine, you're doing great. Okay, so haste is sort of like the other curly thing we had here. It provides another miracle. It puts the cloud over here, and now it's going to give us a time limit. So now when we scan something, we'll have only so much time. Or sometimes right from the beginning of your turn, it only gives you so much time. Oh, the octopus is endangered? All right, so I'm going to do water stuff again, and this is probably, like you said, where things... Oh, it's timers count right now. All right, I'm going to put this... Oh, yeah. No, no. no put here? there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Perfect. And we might get one more placement here. I think we want to show what happens though when it crashes, so we yeah, probably so should. Yeah, so I'm going to... Do you want to put the uh, the bear on it? Yeah, give me a challenge. Okay, so we're... I mean, if you can make this work, we'll keep going. Okay. So we're at 43 points, and the bear is going soon. So this this is ridiculous. All right, you have 20 seconds. The timer's counting down, 20 seconds. Okay. I think the go only to the way... Top. I think you have to go to the top. Well, I think if there's a chance of me getting it on it's there, gonna there, it's going to have to be here. Okay, also, and now, now what it says is rebuild your world. So if we can get everything back on that fell off before this volcano goes off, then we'll actually get to keep Move going. Faster. I'm trying. Go talk. All right. <laughs> yeah, it came over. So 43 points is what we got. So you can, every time you play, you can try to restack different things. There is a, a selection of achievements, kind of like a library of all the different creatures you've created, because there's over 100 or so combinations. Oh, yeah, because you can merge two creatures and then merge those two creatures. Yeah, and create all kinds of funky stuff. So... A part of it is is, is is doing that kind of exploration, but also just trying to get your, your stack. The highest point value I've gotten so far, I believe, is just a little uh, over 100 points. I think. Yeah, when we played the first time, I think we got just short, shy of 100, right? We got like 92 or something. Yeah, yeah, and then we lost the, the cloud, disappeared on us. Oh, the cloud yeah. disappeared, <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that is Beast of Balance. I think, uh, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to review. <laughs> but I think that, in particular, if you had younger children as well, I think this is the sort of thing that might appeal. Two pinkies up. Potentially. <laughs> okay. Boy. <laughs> the live shows always trip me into these, like, review spaces I don't want to be in. Okay. So that's Beasts of Balance. I want to thank the company for sending this along. What is the, the company that... Oh, yeah. I had a lot of fun playing this. this <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. Uh, this is... I Listen, where's the company? They've done a really good job of branding their product. This is designed by Sensible Object. Sensible, sensible Object. Oh, you had it upside down on the screen. Uh, sensible Object there. Okay. Okay. So that that was Sensible Object. Thanks for saying that along. Uh, no, but but seriously, I I've always liked like Jenga style games. So the yes. second you said hey, we're going to be gonna... stacking animals, I'm, like, I'm off. Of course, I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> yes, you were you were excited. We'll push these uh, off to the side. I think we should probably go to the questions and see what yeah, let's what we've missed, and then we'll we'll. Uh, Laptop's really far away from me this time. Though, I so know. I'm not going to help. I, well, that's, makes me well I can't read that far away. Let me... Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to scroll up. Some people have been asking what game is this. So that was Beast of Balance. I'm sure you saw that now. Okay. All right. So people are saying the sound is good. It's happening. The live show's happening. Someone's getting no sound on their iPhone. Yes, echoes. Expect massive echoes. I mean... Echo. echo. Expect our live show levels of echo if you're getting more than that. We yeah. Well, it did sound like we might have been a little extra echoey. Yeah. Uh, okay. Remember, only answer the ones that have questions on. Right. I know. I just enjoy. I look. I just love. Seeing I know. You guys, right? I, I, all these <laughs> conversations I'm missing out on. All uh, right. Oh, interesting question. Good question. Jordan Keith wants to know. Question: When are we going to see Pep on more solo content? Ah, he wants games where you're just playing by yourself. I don't think that's what they mean. Oh. Although. <laughs> I'm not even gonna make that joke. Okay, <laughs> but I mean, if, if people wanted Good. me to play solo games, it would be ironic because personally, I don't play solo games. No, you don't. That's right. So it'd be really funny if everyone's like, "Let's get Pep on the show doing <laughs> games by himself." Yes. I'd be like, "Yay!" Um, we well, yeah, yeah, you haven't. Uh, yeah, recently, you were talking about getting another Pep Talk done. Yeah, the problem. We should film that sometime. We should. <laughs> the problem has been that we. Uh, I have this problem. <laughs> 
I, I, I know what a reasonable amount of content is to do. Mm. I know the reasonable amount. A reasonable amount is two to three uh, instructional videos a month. Oh, at that not per day. At, at, no, <laughs> at most. And then uh, gameplays in and around that and the other things we do. And invariably, I always, something comes along. I'm like, oh, I think this would be weird. I want to do this one. And I go, I'll fit it in. I'll fit it in. And then, you know, the schedule gets a little out of hand. Yeah. Having Pat come on actually is another part of what's hopefully in the long run to smooth that out. So then we'll have more room to explore some of these other side things, like you doing solo stuff and pet yeah. talks and other, other And things. for the most part, I've been doing a, a lot of, of editing, as you mentioned earlier, oh, yes. uh, which yeah. has been a, a huge relief. But I think it's good because I can tell everything's, everything's getting caught up to where originally you would tell me, okay, well, here's the thing scheduled for this month, and here's nine titles that <laughs> I should get done as well this month, but are going to have to keep getting pushed <laughs> yes, until yes. I have the room for them. And that, that list we're is still slowly pushing. dwindling down. Yeah, but it's dwindling. We're pushing, dwindling. but we're pushing less every month, and that's good. Yeah. And it's not a complaint. I'm it's thrilled that there's so much to do. But it, it does make some of these other things that we might want to do for fun, like the side stuff. And the pep talk was mostly because you switched to a new camera. A lot of people know that. the uh, You switched to the 4K. Right. right. Um, and I was pretty much ready to come in and just film on my own <laughs> without really having to think about it. Then you switched to a new camera. So <laughs> I've, I've had to get used to the new camera and how yeah. everything works with that. That's a good point. Uh, before I, I just sit down there and I'm still adjusting to the new camera. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it's, it, takes, it takes a while. Big thanks to my uh, my nephew Ryan for donating the camera uh, to the show. Yeah, no, it's been great. Oh, I just love how it it has an app that goes with it, so you can yeah the work on the, the phone, app is controlling really it from handy. the phone, yeah. and it's in 4K now, which is kind of fun. Uh, a little more detail there. All right, let's see what else we've got for. Oh, uh, Jess Jesse D Black asks, Are you going to do more videos for CMON Kickstarters in the future? The Green Hoarder ones was awesome. Thanks, Jess. That's really nice. I mean, yeah. I was hoping that people would like it. I have uh, always uh, avoided Kickstarters, and I intend to continue avoiding them. I hope that doing this doesn't make a bunch of people come out of the woodwork to look for more Kickstarter-type content, but... It's see, a little different when you know it's a Kickstarter that's going to fund yeah, that's going to fund immediately. And, and Simon, you know, as long as they send me what appears to be near final components, I feel a little better working with it. Like you said, I don't have any qualms. I know that the game's going to come out uh, when it's CMON uh, does a project. So yeah. I would certainly consider doing more CMON projects in the future, but I am not, uh, you know, I'm not looking to add more and more Kickstarter projects. My core, my interest is really instructional content and gameplays. But it is nice to do little things. I mean, it's a different challenge, right? Like we had to work from rules that were not completely final. We had to figure out how are we going to teach and play this in 20 minutes and show what hopefully was enough information like we had to yeah. really plan it out we did and there was times when one of us would start explaining something and the other would just be like no stop we don't need to get that yeah, let's not go that far into the weeds you know like we had a yeah. script to follow but then as we went along we had to sort of judge by feeling anyway uh i would certainly be open to doing more we will see no pun included my friend i'm guessing efka uh says how jealous are you of the amazing time we're about to have at uk my old friend, he used to be my friend, Afka. I used to like him. It was about 30 seconds ago. I remember I liked him very much. How jealous are you of the amazing time we are about to have at the UK Games Expo? Very jealous, in fact. Very jealous. Um, it, it's a convention that a, a number of people have told me, Rodney, you to come up to this convention. It's really good. I think it fits within that Origins level. Okay. I think I've heard it compared that way, so I would assume it's true. And um, I haven't been over to the UK or you know, across the pond. It would be an amazing treat to get to go. Yeah, that would be super. I'd yeah, love really to go cool. there. I should mention, quick a little thing. Uh, I have been invited to be a special guest with the uh, Espen Spiel tour uh, through Geek Nation's tours. So if you are looking for an amazing vacation to take, this is a 14, oh, I'm forgetting the exact date count. It's like close to 14 days, if not 14 days, of a full week before Essen, traveling around Germany with a tour guide, not me. <laughs> I won't be guiding any tours, believe me. You wouldn't want that. This is a rock. <laughs> uh, there's some This is a German rock. <laughs> this is uh, a German building. That's yeah, no. maybe the Blarney Stone. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, so it's and I, I had a chance to talk to the tour guide. He seems really nice, and he actually has some videos online, which I was a watch of, of him actually doing a little self guided tours, talking mm. about some different sites. So I think he's fantastic. I really hope this works out. We need to have at least twelve people sign up. We've had over half of those numbers sign up, so awesome. there are five more would be great. That would make it happen for sure. I mean, it's possible we won't get this. I mean, listen, it's not a cheap trip. There's just no two ways around it. It's yeah. not a cheap 
inexpensive thing. So I mean, I haven't signed up. No, Ben hasn't signed up to go. But I, I hope if you, if you think this would be something you'd like to throw your money at and have a really good time and a really memorable trip, I think it's going to be fantastic. We'll have gaming every night. And, and then, of course, the last week of it is at Essen. And, you I mean, you can hang out with the tour group. You can Obviously, people will be doing their own thing. But in the evenings, there'll be optional stuff where you can come to meetings with various different people. And I'll be there the whole time if that floats your boat. <laughs> Maybe that's why people aren't signing up. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> No, people have been actually it's been it's, the reception so far has been really good. I think uh, Geek Nation Tours is happy. I'm happy, and so hopefully it will happen. Efka, thanks for the great question. All right, um, Tony asked the question which I already answered, and that is uh, Tony Simpson asks, "Are you guys going to Origins?" I am. You're not, but you went to see Mon Expo, and I, I didn't. To the, yeah, so we kind of traded off there. Yeah, we we picked which one one of yeah. us was going to go to <laughs> and which one the other was. So, and I love see Mon Expo. I hope I can get up there uh, next year. Fantastic one. We'll trade next year. Horster2 asks, to which location in Germany are you looking forward to the most? Hmm. Because of the whirlwind of all these activities that have been going on in the last little while, I, I went through and read the entire breakdown on the Geek Nation Tours site of what each day's trip was. And I talked a fair bit about it in the video that I released talking about it. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link in the description of this one later. I need to write down. But all these I have not definitely. memorized all the names and places that things we're going to, and I didn't really lock in like what's the thing I'm most interested in. I'll tell you one thing personally: I love castles. As a kid, I've always loved of course. castle structures. So yeah. the idea of going into like a true historic castle and walking through it, I think I'll sort of be transported back to my youth, and it'll be something really kind of fun and playful to to do. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, going through a castle would be really interesting. Yeah, and there's 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 a uh, Oktoberfest will be taking part in a bunch of there'll be some drinking there <laughs> at various times during the trip and eating lots of food um, and uh, there's this I forget the name of it there's this musical museum of self playing musical instruments this guy who created all these cool self playing instruments and that looks really neat I've heard that tour is really fascinating so is he call that a museum <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were working I can tell you were thinking about something you were really working that joke yeah, I, know. I actually talked to somebody who went on the trip two years ago. Just because I wanted to find out, like, listen, I'm, I'm telling people, hey, this is a tour they should go on. I don't want to mislead people. I feel really bad if people came on and it was a bad tour, right? But um, I talked to someone who went and he just described all the, the trips, all the different excursions as being really great. He actually went with his, uh, I want to say wife, but maybe a significant other but, and, and, and child, and they all had a good time. So, all right, let's see what we get next. Um, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> oh, uh, Jesse D. Black would like to know. Yeah, Marguerite, thank you. Thank you for having my back. That was cruel, wasn't it? It was cruel what Efka said. So <laughs> cruel. Um, oh, uh, Marguerite, I got the um, Maggie Bot. I got my little uh, Life oh. is Magical mug. This is something funny. I'll get back to the questions. Uh, <laughs> I took a picture. I was kind of, listen, I wasn't jealous that you were at CMON Expo. I had things I had to do. There was work to be done. <laughs> I wasn't. Well, it's I, divide and conquer. That's I was the a, whole point. I know, I know. I was a little jealous. I mean, I was a little jealous. Uh, but I, so I took this picture. I was out with my family. We were having a great time today. And there's there's this ridiculous mother goose egg statue. And you were there recently too. Yeah, I went there recently and took. And you took a picture. Like the same yeah. kind of picture. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I took this goofy picture. and I said, "Well, I could be at the Simon Expo, or you know, like look at the fun I'm having. I'm riding this magical goose." And um, I think Sue's. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Sue's. Uh, clipped it out, and then people started doing, making ridiculous pictures. And um, Misty uh, Gamerosity there, she put together this really incredible photo, uh, and it says "Life is magical here at the bottom." It's all kinds of magical things. We got a flying shark, and anyway, I just she, love the T-shirt. Yeah, she said, "Listen, do you mind if I throw this on a couple of shirts or whatever?" And I said, "Go for it. Have have fun with it." And people have we're having some fun with it. And I, I listen, it kind of makes me smile too. So I, I bought one of the bought one of the, the mugs here to have. So it was just a limited time thing, but it was it was fun. You know what I like about it is I know it made me smile. I think it made some other people smile. And I think, you know, just Sue's and everyone who sort of got involved and did something with it to kind of make people's day a little brighter, that's that's a nice thing. That's a nice yeah. thing we can do on the internet. I mean I was at the CMON Expo when I saw it and it <laughs> definitely made my day a little brighter. You wished you were on the goose. Didn't I you? wish you I, did. I, I wish the two of us were riding that goose <laughs> together. Right. Okay. Oh dear. All right. So okay. Scrolling down, finding questions. Well, there was one about the C1 Expo. Oh, oh there was, and, I, and then I just totally got uh, it magic, magical. Uh, so the question was, what were the highlights of C1 Expo, and what games are you looking forward to the most going forward? 
Right, you can answer this one. <laughs> I wasn't there. You just, you're just bad as Efka. Go ahead. Uh, so how? So I have to pretend I don't like these games, but talk about what the highlights were. Okay. <laughs> right. So the highlights for me. I'm not ignoring you, Pep. I have to look something up. There's a reprinting of, oh gosh, Modern Art, uh, which okay. I, I really enjoyed playing. I, I had a lot of uh, default feelings about that game. Uh, I just I love art and I loved being able to sit there and auction <laughs> art. art. It reminded me a lot of uh, a lot of the artistic games I played and all the the new art was really great. I'm cutting you off. No one cares. Uh, no, I, I'm not. Everyone cares. I wanted to say something very quickly. Uh, when I said who did this picture, I said like Misty or something. It's because her Twitter name is Mini Kitty. Her name is Jessica. I kind of combined them in a weird way. Jessica is the one who took Suze's picture and made this magical picture. So, thanks, Jessica. All right, sorry, you were saying, Simon Espo. Song of Ice and Fire <laughs> was very was good. Was very exciting for me <laughs> yes. because uh, I personally don't really like miniatures games that much, like miniature war, war games. games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you constantly try to get me into them, and you just, <laughs> I don't you'll know be like, like, how about this just... one, how about this one, and, and we'll show a little bit of interest, and then it'll kind of wean before yeah. we really get too invested. Um, it's time. But this one time. was was very simple. Uh, like all the rules fit on a card, uh, so I knew how to play. Like they sat me down to play, mm -hmm. and I honestly could have played without them telling me anything about the game. Right. Everything felt that simple to me. Oh, quite and when intuitive they, then. Eh? Quite intuitive. Yeah. And when they talked about how something worked, if I had to ask a question, their answer was exactly what my answer would have been. Okay. It's like, oh, these two units match up. What do we do? And it's like, oh, you like set them together. I'm like, perfect. Okay. That's what I would have done. Yeah, so how, it was all good. How far along was what you saw? Like, they had miniatures, I know, and they um, had some cards. Were the cards final? or? Getting... I don't believe the cards were final, mm -hmm. um, but the cards, I'll just talk about those. So they, had, so they had tactic cards with the idea every turn you would draw three of them, and you would have these tactic cards to play during your opponent's turn, during your turn. Either way, okay. they weren't an action. It was specifically when like X trigger? happens. Okay. Yeah, like a trigger. Okay. When X happens, you play this card. Uh, and the fun part was that you'd roll for initiative at the start, and if you wanted to, you could re-roll your initiative by throwing away a tactic card. So if you were so concerned about going first, you could just dump so your you hand. So you could mitigate some of the randomness there. Yeah, which, gotcha. was, which was kind of, I like that. Okay. I never did it because, yeah. oh, I, I wouldn't want to do that. All right, it's going to be a cost. It's, it's going to be cost. a cost. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the other fun part was that there's also a little intrigue board. I, I'm talking a lot about this one game. So there's also a little That's intrigue right. board where it had the different kind of intrigue, like combat, uh, fealty, intrigue, etc. I don't okay. remember all of them. But the point was you could spend one of your actions, one of your turns, to put a token down onto one of these spaces. Yes. And when you did, it locked the other person out of that space. And then if you played a tactic card that had that token on it, there's yeah. like a second bonus effect that you would get. Oh, okay. So gotcha. as long as yeah. you were yeah. like focused on you your You could manipulate team, it to get even better stuff. I, my understanding... But you sacrifice a turn to do it. Oh, okay. So like okay. someone would be like, okay, I'm moving this miniature, and then you'd be like, I'm activating this, and they're like, okay, well, I'm moving this miniature now. I got like, So their, uh, their board state or the table state was changing in their favor potentially, yeah. but you're working on the awkward. I, my understanding is that some of the characters who you would not traditionally see on the battlefield, like Cersei Lannister... Yes. She, they'll have – there's actions that are happening off board that influence what's happening on board. Is that – Yeah, I... so they didn't have those actual characters okay. there, but they did talk about them. So like Cersei would, would add certain cards okay. and, and certain intrigue options for you. Uh, she actually had a token that instead of going on the board was an extra intrigue you put onto that intrigue board. So you have your normal token and plus you have her little like miniature that you could stick on oh, the intrigue okay. board gotcha. as well. Gotcha. But otherwise the miniatures are all in uh, trays and, and it's all based on tray and – I could talk about this for a while, but <laughs> all right, let's 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 move it along though. Uh, um, name 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 one other game, just because. Uh, the other time. game that I played that seemed very interesting, I think, was Council of Four. Oh yes. Uh, I also played Massive Darkness, but that's not super new. So mm -hmm. Council of Four was good. I believe that's a reprint as well. That's it is a reprint, but it's been given the sort of the Seamon touch, right? Lots of miniatures and, and upgrades to the components. And yeah, things. so the miniatures are, are very unique for the game. Um, well, you were sending me pictures from the convention. And it was great because I would send him pictures with no information. Yes. So just a whole bunch of pictures without any, like, this is how it works. So I just loved when he would tweet them because he'd be like, here's this game. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> There's this thing I don't know anything about. Um, but Council of Four, I think I, in two or three different batches, I kept tweeting because I just, the, uh, not reviewing, not reviewing, to be clear, not reviewing. But the visual aesthetic of it, um, you know, I just was drawn to it. Yeah, it had, had good visuals. There was a lot of stuff that was, okay. was very visual appealing. Of course, it's... There's a lot of miniatures involved in yeah. Simon, and some people aren't going to like that. Some people are like, "No, just give me cubes and things. Like it's too much." But uh, for me, I, I I thought it was just 
lovely. Okay. I want an in-between. I want someone who makes a game that has a bunch of cubes, but they're chiseled cubes. So it's like every cube is like a little carved wooden <laughs> miniature almost. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. We've got a question from Coco Shake. I like your name, Coco Shake. Do you know if there are any new board game expansions, board game slash expansions being published with mo with movie? Excuse me, I don't know why I'm burping. With movie Rogue One as the theme, other than the expansion for Star Wars Rebellion. Well, thanks. That was the thing I was going to tell you, and I was going to feel really clever. Oh, did you know Star Wars Destiny Rebellion? Destiny has uh, or um, Des Star Wars Destiny Star Wars does Destiny have a Rogue has. One expansion, but I think that's all I know about. Um, well, the only other thing I could guess at would be uh, there's a Star. Uh, Star Wars. I think you said Star Trek. There's a no. Star Wars RPG, uh, and that it would make it would make sense for that to have some yeah. sort of expansion. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. But like, I haven't heard. No, you're just yet. speculating. I'm just speculating. Take his speculation and run. <laughs> yeah. Well, but stay here. <laughs> stay, stay here for the live yeah, show. Stay here for the live show. If you run afterwards, if you, unless you're watching your phone, then you can you can take you can off. run and right. yeah. <laughs> okay, so Josh, Josh Steinberg asks. Do you know if Rob Davio owns a copyright on legacy-style games? I was wondering why That's we haven't question. seen an influx of true legacy games since the success of Pandemic Legacy. Josh, I, I will give you a tentative answer on the first part. I don't believe he has a trademark on legacy. In fact, other uh, designers have sort of asked for his blessing. Mike Fitzgerald, I believe, is one of those designers uh, of baseball highlights and a variety of other games, uh, Mystery of Rummy and such. Um, he... For example, is working on, I believe, a mystery rummy game that has a legacy component. And he contacted Rob and said, hey, I want to do this. What do you think? I think Rob said, you're crazy. Uh, <laughs> I think it's Rob's kind of generic answer because they're just so much work. And I think that answers mm -hmm. your second part. The reason why you're not seeing a huge influx of them is I think there are several levels more complex to create. Well, yeah, especially when you run across people who ask, like, how well did you play test this? It's like, well, the only answer most people could give is that I didn't. <laughs> like at that point when you're making a legacy game if you're going to try to produce it quickly you can't have no, play tested no, that much it, it's, it's like it takes long, so much such work. A, and i mean seafall for example i know they play tested for ages on that game right and and i remember ignacy actually in, oh yeah uh, first martian yeah oh right specifically right. said um he's very worried there is some of the content that they didn't have a chance to play test as much as they might have liked yeah. Simply because of just how many different variations. Like, well, if you're doing this scenario and oh this yeah, and he this was saying happens. like there's a possibility like you might you might find the one series of choices that within the app it, the app just goes like what you know and they'd have to fix it after the fact or whatever and or that's... or just that it would be impossible to win based on like right, you know, a few right. scenarios that if you make the wrong choices or not the wrong choices but like a certain combination the right choice in a certain combination it right. might just be like sorry but you're doomed. <laughs> it's right. So yeah, how do you how do you plan for all those contingencies and, and each game group style it just gets so much more complex i mean you designed a legacy game oh my god clay legacy clay legacy tell them a little bit about oh, it you're torturing me so clay legacy you have it around here anywhere it's it's buried i, I could get it out Good. if i really needed to it belongs uh, but so the idea is you have like clay like uh play-doh kind of yes stuff. oh it's and... clay i wish it was play-doh and so there's like different actions you would take and they would be like uh, you take this little like dropper thing and you grab pieces of clay and it's like a mini scoop right it's it like a mini scoop. scoop yeah you'd scoop from the the main pot of clay and you could add it to your clay. you could add to your clay and the idea was you needed to build the biggest tower of clay by the end and, and of course if you've ever tried to make something long and tall <laughs> out, just, of, out of play-doh it falls over right so there's little extra things you can pick up based it's like a whiz kids miniature yeah but like there's when you open up different legacy components, you unlock uh, like marbles or like those little uh, fish gem kind of things, or even uh, toothpicks that help you keep the towers up. We never got to toothpicks because you had packets and pa you you had created oh, it's tons a of massive legacy. box. It's a massive. It, what box. was it inside of it? It was inside of a box of another game or something, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't another game. No, no it was. Uh, it Some was random weird. It was actually like a TV box cut in half. It was, <laughs> so it was huge. Weird. But you brought this thing. I'm to just gonna go get it. What you get it. And I mean. The, Look, can I be a little critical just for fun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The clay was like not Play-Doh. So it was getting stuck in all of our fingernails. Like we were just picking out of my hands for days. Oh, you have it. You got it. Okay. This is a, I wasn't as buried as I thought it is. So um, this thing is – It was outrageous. It's huge. It is outrageous. This is, the, this is Clay Legacy. Uh, maybe we can – no, we can't go to the other table. I'll just tilt it a little bit. Uh, oh, but we can. We there's can pull. the. Oh, yeah, like, the Ouija board. There's yeah. a Ouija board in here. It's not actually a Ouija board, but the, this has more of the components. Yeah, so this is like the main board. And then there's the little pieces that'll pull off to reveal more actions and stuff like that. Gems. I, let, 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 can we just show all the packets that you just pull it some Oh, yeah. Packets, there's, so. You know, the packets. whole A and B. Who knows what's in there? So, 
funny enough, I'm colorblind, which a lot of you probably know. Every packet I'm grabbing is a different packet, by the way. I'm just grabbing the same packets. We've got, there's like more packets in here. It's packets everywhere. Um, okay. But yeah, and your little player board's That's actually, right. let's pull out, uh, oh, there's going to be at least, play it. there's going to be, no, there's going to be at least one, no, it's, it's like, in the Ouija box. Oh, right. Oh, I forgot there's, there's a whole there's box like of stuff little, in here. There's like the little player boards. Yes. And uh, they actually have little special abilities that they've gained and will have for the rest of the game and stuff. Too. Reveal no, when the player owns five stones, something happened. Oh yeah, oh. something happened. We Ooh. did get that one out. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, is, it's a game based on colors and like, uh, mixing colors. So some of the unlocks are actually based on, you know, if uh, two colors mix together, like if you're yellow and blue, just because right. they're they're hard to deal with, end up mixing together and make whatever color yellow blue? and blue. No, green? yellow and blue? Yellow and blue makes green. Sure. Right? Anyway, uh, you would actually unlock, like, the green color, which would now unlock another character, actually. Okay, yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, like I said, I'm colorblind. So the idea of me making a game about mixing <laughs> colors is it's uh, hilarious. Yeah, and listen, uh, you... Look, everyone who's watching here, I'm sure, is at least somewhat impressed, right? But, but let me tell you, I didn't play test this at all. I <laughs> no. made all the ideas, yes, that's right. and I just got people to play it, and people are like, there's there's a varying degree of like fun and, hey, I have clay all over my hands. This is disgusting. <laughs> people were having a good time, to, to, yeah. to your credit. It was fun. But and I fixed it. I, I got uh, Play-Doh now. You did. And, so and it's not as bad. Uh, that was a big answer uh, that I did not expect to give to your question. But no, as far as I know, he does not have some kind of copyright claim on it. And certainly, people are welcome to try it. I, I think he'd be. I think he. I've heard him talk to, but I think he sees it as a compliment that people are interested in trying to do it. And some uh, some people have designed games that have similar elements, um, but aren't quite the same thing. Like even Fabled Fruit, for example, has kind of like a legacy component where like you're building and continuing on through based on how you've played. Right. But without the there was another word for it. Do you remember the word? Um, do you remember the word that was used for that for one? For which? Uh, for Fabled Fruit. Oh. It wasn't legacy. It was, it was something uh, else. As someone in the chat has already said it ten times, so I'm sure they've got it. But yeah. Yeah. There was a the, – Steve Bonacore came up with it, or Freeman Free, someone came up with their own name for what that was going to be. It's kind of a – because it's, it's not permanent changes. You can reset everything, right? Yeah. Uh, just just in case you're wondering, if you ask a question like, what's your favorite game of this or what's your favorite of that, I'm, we're, we're not going to answer. It's just kind of off the, the books. Not not trying to ignore your questions. It's not the kind of question we answer. And if I answer, if I answer, there's only like a sixty percent chance that it's a serious answer. <laughs> okay. I might just no. be trying to bother Rod. Right. <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> um, so okay, this is a general enough question. I think we can talk around the answer. It's it's dancing the fine line here. Ryan Ballinger wants to know: Do you guys typically enjoy Euro style games such as Agricola or Food Chain Magnate? Uh, I saw a couple on your shelf. But don't really see a lot of your games featured on the channel. Thanks. Uh, yes, the answer to that. I guess we're not talking specifically in general. I love Euro games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love Euro. Yeah, as you well. do too. Especially. It's all it's all working in your head, um, and I love the the mathing out of everything. You know, like this is going to give me seven points. This will only give me two. So this is better. absolutely quick. You're very good at I think assessing value. That's one thing that I, you have a real strong advantage over me. You can look at it and go, well, this is clearly better. And I'm sitting there going, why? Why is it better? This looks yeah. good too. No, no, this is better. And I'll argue with you for 20 minutes, and by the end, it's like, oh, yeah, he's right. It's better. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, no, why do we not see more of them on the channel? Ooh, I don't know. Like, I mean, we did the gallerist. That's a big one, I think. I mean, uh, viticulture. I, I think the easy um, answer to why you might not see them on the channel is that there's a lot of Euro games. Um, but first of all, I feel like a, Euro games aren't coming out as frequently as they were before. Not true. <laughs> but I feel like there's a lot of classic Euro games you might expect to see that have already come out. And, mm -hmm. and from there, um, like, th this is what I mean is that when okay. there's newer games coming out, like the difference between a Euro game and like I guess Ameritrash, I don't really super like that term. Yeah. But the difference between like Euro and Ameritrash is that Ameritrash are a bit easier to teach and like approach, whereas a Euro game, there's a lot of different options you have to talk about. So I, I think that maybe Ameritrash games by nature are just a little flashier, a little more like they're just going to grab your attention more. I, Sometimes people yeah. say, hey, how come you don't do more of this or more of that? I kind of want to go back and look at my catalog because I think I think I've actually done a lot. I'm, I'm kind of in my brain You've done a lot of like yeah. aquasphere. I'm going through the list. I'm going, I think there's quite a few. But what happens is in the in, in the timeline of the show, there'll be the, like these valleys, right? Like a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of Ameritrash, and then a whole bunch of Euro, and then a whole bunch of you know what I mean? And so it can feel sometimes like, oh boy, I haven't seen as many. Like sometimes I'll get a comment like, oh, I don't see as many gameplays as I used to. 
Well, I'll, I'll keep track of how many gameplays versus instructional videos I'll do each year. And yeah, it, it'll fluctuate, but it's generally across each year about the same. About the same. But you'll have a month or two where there's like no gameplays. And so it feels like, what's happened to the channel? You know what I mean? It'd just be a weird scheduling thing. Well, I feel like the just the influx of, of how Euros versus Ameritrash come out is, it, it probably fluctuates as well. Like there'll probably be three to four months of like, oh, there's a lot more Ameritrash coming out than, than Euro. No, man. I think it's just everything's hitting the market all the time. I'm probably... I think I'm probably a little more drawn to, I don't know, it's pretty close. I don't want to say I'm more drawn to Ameritrash, but sometimes when I'm thinking about video, I do tend to be drawn towards that because I feel like, oh, this is going to be fun to show. Visually, this is going to be a, a more yeah. interesting presentation. Oh, it's a Meriflash. It's a Meriflash. Oh, there you go. Oh, Meriflash. Let's, let's rename that's, it. That's pretty fancy. I like that. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so it's really not a personal taste thing. I, I enjoy Euros quite a bit. No, we both enjoy that. enjoy Euros, yeah. Okay. The Gallerist was actually one of my favorite games to the gameplay with you, actually. Yeah, that really was enjoyed that, that was fun. I, I enjoyed um, taking what is kind of a brain burning type of game and trying to insert a little bit of like flash into that. Like, yeah. Oh, we're gonna. <laughs> like, we had fun we talking ran, and debating. We, we, kind of, we kind of like ran a little mob. Oh yeah. Out of that, right? <laughs> It's Except, e I think it's easier to, to make up a story and like have fun with it when there is such a, a contrast. Story. When it's such a contrast to even, yeah. or yeah, when there's or not like even. when it's a little drier, like your choice right. isn't super thematic. Like when we're playing something like Zombicide, for example, and I pick up a particular thing, the story of how I found that thing is kind of obvious. It's but built we still in, say it. it's right? Built in. Yeah, or like near and far, but yeah, with something like the Gallerist, we kind of have to extrapolate <laughs> a little more. <laughs> you so really do. More creative and have Why are all these fun. pink people moving into the gallery? Like, what does this even mean? You yeah. get to make up and play with it a little bit. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So, uh, I'll try to answer a little uh, Green Horde question here. Cypher uh, Mokhtar, sorry if I'm uh, mangling your name there, you wrote, I saw your Zombicide Green Horde video, the Siege Engine. Do you get that from a card, or is it set up first at the beginning of the game? Great question. In the scenario that we set up, that was a real uh, scenario. That is the first scenario of the game. Yeah. Uh, and you start with the Siege Engine in play, or the, the Catapult. That, I thought, was going to be a big deal, because everything in the, in the literature called it a Catapult, and everyone knows, or everyone thinks of that as a trebuchet, which it is. But a trebuchet is a type of catapult, so it's kind of technically right, but it's not yeah, what it's, most people think of, right? It's so. typical. And I noticed in the Kickstarter, they also have a ballista. They do. Which is another kind of siege engine, so I'm not sure if there's like a siege engine category that's going to be in the game or yeah, not. Yeah, so the catapult, though, it's there. It's in a certain spot on the board, and you can like run to it, and then you can start activating. You can, and I think we said in the video, you can spend three actions to move it. So you can start like carting it around with you, although yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to move slowly. Did you see what the ballista did? I didn't. No. no, no. So it uh, it's like the catapult, but it okay. moves and fires on uh, with only two actions instead of three. Okay. Does and it I think it, it must do less damage. It didn't yeah. show that, but it did talk about how it, it like hits multiple things in a straight line. So I think oh, if you have to set up it mows through. through. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so I'm, cool. I'm excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> that is neat. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, this is an interesting question, Josh. I, I'm not going to know the answer to this, but I'm going to read it out loud anyway. Josh Steinberg asks, question, online, that eclipse? Hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to reinterpret what you're asking here. You contacted your from the local game store, and they said that a distributor said that the game in question, the Eclipse expansion, I'm doing a really good job of rephrasing this. Well, paraphrasing. Yeah. Uh, a particular expansion for Eclipse was is restricted in Canada, and that's why your from the local game store can't get it because the distributor can't get it. And you asked, do you know why a game would be restricted? That's a good question. I have no idea. Now I yeah. want to know. I want to look into that, Josh. I want to find out. Uh, because I've, I've never actually heard of that. I mean, the only time... I mean, listen. Not restricted, but uh, you definitely hear of certain games come out in a location. And yeah, you just can't get it somewhere else right. because the, it isn't shipped to that location. Now, there are, like... There are rights to games, like a, a designer will sell maybe a right to game and, and, and the publisher owns it, and then they have the right to, per, to sell the game within their country, but the rights haven't been given to sell it in another country. Mm. That's possible. Yeah. Uh, maybe a close approximation of that is when you're on the internet and someone sends you this really cool link to a video they tell you it's going to be amazing to check out, and you click on it and it says, I'm sorry, this is not playable in your country. And so because you're in Canada, you're just sad. You just have to watch. There's a lot in Canada. Yeah, you just have to go look out the window and watch the snowfall instead. Well, I find if you search, you can usually find it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that's maybe something equivalent. It's, like a, it's a rights issue maybe, mm. a copyright issue, I mean. Okay. Uh, we have, I should keep an eye on the time. We're doing good for time. We still got half an hour left. Uh, but I'd like to keep these to around 90 minutes. We do want to show you another game. We're going to show you the Takedo app. But before we do that, I'm going to answer a couple more questions. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? I love the I'm questions. I'm having fun. Okay. 
All right. I mean, that's what these are for. Tu Duong. Tu Duong says, what are some ways you welcome someone new into your game group? Oh, that's a great question. That's a good question. I hope you have an answer. Uh, so the first thing is, I think it's important to play games that they have an interest in. So the mm. first thing, if someone new comes, is kind of ask, hey, what have you played before? And if you don't have that game to already sit down and try to play, something similar. You know, if they say, you know, the classic, oh, I've played a lot of Catan. Try to find another game that's a similar kind of, you know, Or Monopoly trading. or Risk, they might even say. Yeah, they might say Risk. Yeah, and yeah. so you'll be like, oh, you've played Risk before. Maybe you'd like Kemet. Small World oh. or Kemet. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. So trying to find something to get them in, I think, is important rather than just dropping something completely new on them. Oh, yeah. something to relate to. Um, okay, I thought of one. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of buried in your question, really. How do you welcome them? Well, welcome them. That's. I mean, this, is a, this is a silly thing, maybe, but sometimes, especially if you meet in a public space and you see someone new, there can be kind of an instinct of like, well, who's going to go up and introduce themselves to this person? I'm in the middle of a game. Should I stop? You know, and, or, and there's also sometimes the awkwardness of a new person. You know, like yeah. they're going to be awkward. Maybe you're going to feel awkward. But I mean, I think a big step is someone's going to go up and say, hey, are you, you interested in checking out some games? Like... We'd love to have you join. We're, you know, I'm in something. But I can jump out and help show you something or whatever, right? Like, yeah. If your ultimate goal is to bring someone new into the game group, then I think you have to sort of take on the mantle of someone who's going to be, uh, you know, spreading the good news of the of the hobby, right? So. Yeah, and that's something. Usually in our game group, that's something that usually happens. Is that if someone new comes in, or honestly, even if someone that just comes in the door, right? Everyone will usually stop, kind of get up and get away from the table and just kind of. Greet you know what? You're person. right. I, I'm, that's I'm glad you brought that up. Usually, there's yeah. a big cheer. Like it, even if I come in the door, yeah, and like not Chris. to anybody, it's like, oh, it's Chris, it's Rodney. Like everyone kind of stops. Hey, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of a nice thing. And I always feel bad because see, I I know this is going to sound weird, but I know okay. what everybody's footsteps sound like. <laughs> so so you every know time someone answer. comes to the door, I'll know who it is. But sometimes I'm wrong, and so we'll open you're the door. You're colorblind, but you're very foot. Yeah, Step it, it aware. got extra hearing power. <laughs> sure, okay. But so someone will come into the door and I'll be like, hey, it's Chris. And then it won't be. And I'll be like, it's like, it's like, it's, oh, oh. it's John. <laughs> but it's not that you're disappointed to see John. It's just that you're disappointed you're right. disappointed that I'm wrong. And then they'll be like, well, I'll just leave. leave it. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah, welcome them in. I think you're right. Pick a, find out what kind of games they're interested in. Bring them in that way. Listen, don't be afraid. If they're nervous about playing a game and they don't know what to pick, Mm. To have them sit down with you and go, well, here's what we're playing on. You can kind of be my partner, and I'll walk you through what we're doing, and you can kind of see. And that way, if they're nervous about who's around the table and just suddenly being thrown in the middle of it, they can kind of just kind of ease themselves in. And maybe after they're done, you're like, do you want to try this? Now you see how it works. Maybe they want to. Maybe they want to do something different. You know, I don't know. This and that's perfect if you're hosting too, because yeah. you do that, and then someone else comes in, and you basically say, hey, you know, you're comfortable with this now. Why don't you take over? All handle yes. this new person that right. came in and, and do the same kind of thing. If you have a, a, a very large game group where you're playing at like a game store, that's that's a great idea. You yeah. you teach someone long enough that you can kind of back away from the game when you need to, and then and bring someone they, else. Yeah, in. hopefully they make the connection. So that I mean, it's it's a it's a good endeavor. If you're if you see someone new and you're trying to welcome them in, then you're already on the right foot. Yeah. Keep trying. Um, that's how we bring new people into the hobby. Uh, okay, let's see what we got down here. Let's see, boy, there's a lot of questions. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Josiah Bennett asks, question. Recently, I have seen folks voicing concern over close relationships between reviewers and publishers. Since okay. you don't review and work with publishers, curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, this is, I mean, this, oh gosh, how much time do we have now? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of fortunate in some regards because I made a conscious decision early on. I didn't want to review games. Um, that wasn't like... A strategy so that I could avoid, you know, um, looking like I'm doing backroom dealings with publishers or something. I just personally I get uncomfortable with the idea that someone might hear me say, this game's amazing, and then they go buy it, and it's like, this game's terrible. Why did you tell me it was so great? And I can attest to that, because even in a personal life, you know, if, if I ask you about a game, usually you're still a little bit on the fence about saying, I love this, or I hate this. I'll hedge it quite a bit. You'll yeah. try to hedge it quite a bit. <laughs> and, and so I can see it even when trying to have, like, a... A personal conversation. It's like, well, what do you feel about this game? It's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are you feeling today? Are you really happy? Well, then maybe you'd like this. I don't know. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's it's anyway. So I've always had just kind of a personal uh, distance I've wanted to place between my opinion and what I share with kind of the viewers. It's not really me trying to be obtuse or not wanting to answer. And listen, uh, in person at conventions on other people's channels, even here in the live show, you know, you'll usually tease a few things out of me because I, I have opinions. I love 
ultimately, I do you enjoy do. talking about games. Like Kemet. Like Kemet. I mean, that's a game that I have. Uh, and <laughs> I like Kemet and Strike. Okay, so anyway, the, the <laughs> thing is, uh, it's not that I don't have opinions. And in, in person, if you meet me, meet me at a convention, you want to ask, hey, what do you think of this game? Most likely, I'll feel more comfortable because we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. When I talk on here, I don't know who I'm talking to and what their interests are. I have no context. And I feel like I'm just shooting information into the wind. That is not to say that reviewers don't provide a very valuable resource because they just have the, <laughs> the strength of character to do it that I don't have, right? And I, I watch lots of reviews. Oh, yeah. Like, I watch lots, and, I, and that informs my decisions. It leans me in one direction or another, so I find them very valuable. Okay, that wasn't the question, though. The question was, how do I feel about the relationship that some reviewers might have with publishers? Is there something to be concerned about here? Uh, yes. I mean, listen, every human being has a right to... Uh, be skeptical. I think that's good. Like to raise an eyebrow, to go, well, is this okay? But mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a line between skepticism and cynicism. And online, I see people who are very quick to go to cynicism, where I'd prefer to see them just stay within the realm of skepticism. Like have a healthy skepticism about. Yeah, it's like, like I wonder if this is happening rather than flat out being like, oh, this person must be, is definitely I, in pocket of this. I person. saw them at a convention. They were hanging out with the publishers and they were having a drink and they were guffawing and laughing around. Therefore, they're in the pockets of that publisher. Like I think that's a stretch. I think. I mean, is it possible? Certainly, certainly it's possible. But I think it's. I don't like to see people make the judgment call about things they can't possibly be informed about. You cannot know how in the pocket or out of the pocket someone is. So I just feel a little uncomfortable passing those judgments. Well, but yeah. I, I understand the concerns people might have. I think it's, see, here's my feeling is that every review is wildly subjective. There's no such thing as an objective review. And, and that word, those terms are very important to me. And people will talk about objectivity. How are you going to be objective? You can't be, you can never be objective. You basically have to be a judge. Like a judge that right. decides he wants to review games. This maybe. is made of plastic. Now I'm giving you an objective review. This is pink. This is green. Although is it objectively that? Pat would say it's a different color. I mean, even that. Who knows? But like when you talk about fun and, and the important things in a review, that is wholly subjective. And oh yeah, I remember I, I told you the other day about how I, I won't say the game, but I basically said this is the the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> right. And I mean, other people have said it, it's an amazing game. Yeah, it's rated very high on BGG, but you just couldn't I said stand it, it right? and I said it's the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> right. And then and it's hard because when I say that, of course, I'm not saying this is the worst game ever made. Right. It's right. the worst game I personally have I've ever played. played, in my opinion. But it, it's hard because you don't hear that when a reviewer says this is the worst game ever. You hear. This is the, the worst, worst game, game ever. ever. You don't hear that I had a bad experience because you hear what they're saying, not what they mean. And is it possible because you've been sponsored by a publisher that you're likely to be more favorable? Yes, definitely, definitely possible. Um, I think I have not seen yet in experience any, any rash of, here's a review where this reviewer is saying this game is like, over the moon, fantastic, and the whole rest of the community is saying it's terrible. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we were seeing that, I would feel like, okay, now here's something we could point to and go, something feels a little off here. Um, the reviewers, like, to give you an example, like Tom Vassell, I was at the CMON Expo with him the first year, and <laughs> he very publicly, to the designers' faces, was like trashing games that they were prototyping to him, and like, He's not interested in, in hurting his relationship with Simon, but mm -hmm. he didn't have any qualms over saying exactly what was on his mind about that. Um, again, I, listen, I, I don't know how to pass judgment on each individual case. There might be some where there's something questionable going on. I, I, I mean, look, we've even danced with it. In Tabletop Showcase, Simon is sponsoring Tabletop Showcase. Financially, we're getting a financial payout from that. Now, some people could go, well, hold on now. That means the content that we see during Tabletop Showcase is suspect. I, I endorse your right to be skeptical. I think you should be skeptical. Do that. Well, of course, because they are paying you to yes. release content about the game that they have right. made. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, of course, there's a little bit of like, well, we're going to talk about the game because they paid us to talk about the game. Well, I mean, you might even not even know the background. So the, the way the Tabletop Showcase works is we pick the game first and mm -hmm. then we approach the publisher. So the bias is built in. We are specifically picking a game that exactly. we think is going to be what we know we like. All right, that cat's out of the bag. We believe that it has the potential to be liked by not everybody, of course, but a, a larger majority of them will dislike it. And so that's why we have an interest in, in, in sharing that particular game and, and spending a week packing and unpacking that game. And our hope is that because the content is not really review focused, it's more like examining different aspects of the game, 
that even if you have that little bit of suspicion in, in your mind, which you're right to have, you'll walk away and go, no, I've got enough information I can see what this game is about, and I feel confident that I have meaningful information. Yeah. Wow. So we've danced a whole bunch of things there. I don't know if I've answered your question. I, I hope in some way I've, I've addressed some element of it. I think it's a fascinating question and worth probably talking about it's a whole in a more tabletop focused worth way. Of conversation. It's probably a tabletop worth of conversation. Like right now I'm just talking live and, and scattershot a little bit here. But I'd love to sort of like sit down and, and unpack my thoughts about it. I don't endorse cynicism. Skepticism, fine. Uh, I, I think people are very quick to get to the cynical side, and I think you have to be careful of that a little bit. Um, <laughs> great question, though. Great question. <laughs> I love that kind of question. It's really, <laughs> love the, really <laughs> thoughtful. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh boy, we just jumped. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. There, I thought we were towards the end of the question, but there's like a thousand more. Let's let's uh, let's do two more questions. No, no let's do the, let's do the game. We'll come back for more questions. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> uh, no pun included. Says Amira Flash. I used to dance under that name. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, that's like another that. reason why I'd like to get over to the UK because I'd love to see Afghan person. Um, Oh boy, yeah, man. There's a way more questions here than I realized. You, All right, well, let's let's okay. We're gonna switch. We're gonna do a little little uh, little look at, a, at an app here for funsies. Uh, again, just for fun, sort of like uh, this game. You know, just something we're we're doing oh, to show you. Still on there. No, no money hand, changed hands in the showing of these these games. I guess the games changed hands, and the app changed hands. No money though. No money though. Everything is value though on some level. All right, Takedo. This is the app, uh, and we, we didn't get a chance to check this out. Pep, I don't think I've played it as much as you have. Can you maybe walk us through a little bit here, what we've got? Yeah, so I mean, of course, like most apps, you have the option to play offline or online. We're going to play offline because there's just the two of us here. Sure. And of course, you can play solo against computers, or you can pass and play. Let's pass so, and play. So, uh, yeah, let's play. There's just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. try. Just okay. the two All right. So, so play this court. We, it's... Charge it's fine. Down. I'm going to stand up a little bit. And sorry, the table shakes a bit. We're uh, It's a little unstable. Now, the nice part is the game offers you tutorials when you need it. So two-player mode in Takedo is a little bit different. We know how to play those, so we don't need that tutorial. And now we need to pick our traveler. Okay. Uh, so I will pick the artist. All right, the artist. And I will pick... And I have to say, look, I'm... It's, it's going to feel a little review. I, lo I do love the animations of this game. Uh, Takedo is, is universally praised as being a... Uh, visually a treat, and uh, I think the app does a nice job of accentuating that. I am going to go with this character, say yes, and then it inserts the third kind of dummy character, which you can see, I, I like this, he's on strings. Yeah, he's a puppet. <laughs> so we can start here, right? Yep. All right. So can you just maybe swipe here and show us just a little bit of the, the space? Like everything's been 3D rendered that you would normally see. Yeah, so we start off in our, our little inn, and then, yeah, you can see you can go all the way through the area. But the nice part is, if you really don't like all this graphical element, like look at all this stuff I have to swipe through, you can also just tap, you know, I want to go to this space. It's all labeled out down here at the bottom. Okay. Um, now the important thing is, it shows that it is actually the puppet's turn first. Oh yes, we can see that here by the main character at the top. And then it shows which player is controlling the puppet at this particular it time. It seems to be me, is that true? It looks like... So from a distance here. We are looking at a distance. So I, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's me. So I am going to move the traveler. A little dummy here. I can use this to kind of block off space. I think I'm going to block off the shop. So let's... I love so the shop. A, a second tap? Yeah. So I'm kind of blocking that off from you. And then it's... I think it's... Uh, it's your turn, right? It is my turn. Yeah. So, you so the, the person who's in lead is always the person in control of the puppet, and the person in last place in Takedo, of course, is, is who goes first. Time. Yeah, if you don't know how to play Takedo, we do have a, a video showing you uh, both how to play it, and we have a full playthrough as well if you'd like to check that out. And so like, I went to uh, to meet, uh, I think it's an encounter, I don't remember the name of the particular space. Like um, the touristy spot where you the meet touristy people, spot, yeah. travelers, fellow travelers. The traveler spot. And so I met this traveler, and he's going to give me... He's a guide. Let me help you complete the oh, sea panorama. That's amazing. I'm the artist. I would love to help get some help completing these, so perfect. So and it even see. kind of paints it in here, right? Yeah. Kind of continue to paint the panorama. There's yeah, five parts. It'll yeah. paint them more. Hopefully, I can and get one of the other ones. I might even oh, 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 check mark, and you'll need to okay that again. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go on a journey. Uh, let me see. I think what I'll do is I think I would like to fill in. Actually, I'll go. Yeah, I'll go here. I'm going to get a little bit of the panorama. This one only has three parts, right? So I filled in the first part here. We'll check that off. 
And we won't play a full game here. Don't worry about that. We're just going to play a few turns so you can see some of the graphical elements. And so because we'll... you're in the lead, you get to control right. the puppet I'm ahead. So what do I want to block? Let me think. Uh, I, I know you like the art stuff, so I'm going to block off this mountain here. Oh, you're so mean. I'm so mean. People talk about uh, Takeda like it's this nice, peaceful game, but it can be a little cutthroat if you want it to be. Yeah, the two-player version is, is quite a bit more cutthroat because you really do have that extra player that one person is, is constantly pushing the other person with. Uh, so I'm... Well, it looks good to you here. And so just if you haven't played before, basically you're going on this track. You can jump as far down the track as you want to. You can go to any space ahead of you that you want. The catch is the person in behind can keep taking turns one after the other until they catch up or pass you, right? So how far you jump ahead to get that spot you really want to go to might open up sort of more actions for the other player. But we're, we're just kind of leapfrogging each other here. I'm going to, uh, let's see. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go shopping here. So I'm going to go to the store. Uh, oops, I've tapped the wrong thing. There we go. So I'm going into the shop. You and see it'll, is, it'll lay out the options for you there, too. So here are the things I can buy, right? At two bucks a pop. And it shows here how much money. i got five coin. I'm going to buy one of these beautiful yukatas, and I'm going to tap it again. Boom. Now, I should mention the app lets you track. You can sort of see a quick view here of what you want. But if you tap here, you can actually see everything that you've collected. So there's there's the item that I just grabbed at the shop here, right? And on top of that, there's actually a little score thing that'll show you everything oh, each, everyone has gained in each of the categories. Each of the categories. So you keep track of exactly who's winning and, and what particular okay, thing. Okay, that is clever. I like that. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. I don't want to exit the game yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll buy one more thing. Sure. Ooh. I'm going to buy that as well. And so that goes in. Boom. And I think I, when I'm done here, Pep, how do I leave? I'm going to go down here and hit the OK button like yep. you always do. All right. So Pep will take one more turn, and then maybe we'll just we'll end it here. We'll go back to some questions because there's so many questions. Well, if I'm only taking one more turn, I'm going to jump ahead to that ocean panorama because okay. I want to show them what happens when you can build a little bit more. See, that extra little piece gets filled, filled in, and that's just beautiful. That is nice. All right. So I have not explored the online capabilities. I feel like there was some changes recently. There's an update recently. Yeah, I, I haven't played a, a lot of online uh, since it got released, but... I will switch uh, over here to the headshot. Ta-da! But there you go. There's a little little app look. If you want to see app games explained way better than that, uh, then I would recommend you check out Suzanne. Suze, um, she has a great segment on the Board Game Breakfast where she will talk about uh, apps. She also talks about just the Kickstarter segment as well. Yeah, and Suzanne is just a wonderful human being to follow, not only for just the, the commentary that she has, but also for the fact that she tells you every time apps are on sale. And oh, I yeah, that's it. true. Yeah, yeah, you I know. love it because she'll just – some days she'll just sit there and she'll post like 10 things. Like, these things are on sale today. And I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's right, yes. Yeah, so definitely uh, – I recommend. You know, let, me, let me find her Twitter here. In case you aren't following Suze already, I would like to recommend you do. Yes, I know it's, it's Suzanne, but it's, it's, it's a number. number I never remember the number. number. I, know. I feel like it's 49. I've been following her for so long, I have I have lost track. And it's it's four, so it's at 425 Suzanne, S-U-Z or Z-A-N-N-E. Yeah. 425 Suzanne. Okay. Uh, and she's sometimes prone to Photoshopping people into weird situations, too. <laughs> That's always fun. Okay. Uh, Clegacy, someone said. Play Legacy. Clegacy. Legacy. I like <laughs> it. Wow. Okay. Stealing so it. We've got 10 minutes left. I'm going to try to answer. You guys want to hang around for just a few more questions? We At least 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right. We'll do 10 minutes of questions, and we will do our best to get through as many as possible. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, wow. 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 Do you wow. need any more juice over there? Uh, I could use a little more juice. Okay. Oh, boy. Don't spill any juice on the fabric. Right. I, I'm going to scroll quite a ways back here. The um, a lot of questions, guys. I'm going to, because I don't want to waste time while you watch me scroll. It's it's terrible live viewing. I'm just going to jump. I, ahead I just, a I just bit. found I just found where we were. Oh well, then never mind. Now I'll just continue where we were. But if we do miss your question, feel free to ask it again. Uh, because even if we don't answer it, we usually at the end we'll just kind of do a quick yes speed or no. Speed round. Yeah, we'll try to speed round. Uh, okay, so Bob Fick is asking, I'm go well, he's saying, I'm going to Gen Con this year. What are your responsibilities? Do you have any time for gaming? It would be nice to game with you. That's, that's a great question. That's very nice, Bob. Thank you for wanting to play a game with me. Um, I don't have a lot of responsibilities at Gen Con. There's a few things I take in. But Gen Con is admittedly my least gaming convention for me. I think you it's do a fair bit of werewolf. <laughs> 
Not anymore. I used to no, yes. quite a bit. Not, not, no. I, I enjoy my sleep a little more now, but I'm, now that I'm hitting 30. Yes, yes. You old uh, man, you. Yeah, I used to stay up all night, but yeah, I need, I need my sleep now. Uh, so I don't play a lot. I, I do get a few games in, but it's they're like totally unplanned. It's off the cuff. One place I will be for sure is the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast Meetup. Can I recommend them to you as well? If you have not listened – if you're interested in podcasts, if you hate podcasts, maybe these guys will change your mind. Uh, the Secret Cabal Game Podcast is fantastic. Really good friends of mine. And they have this wonderful meetup at Origins and Gen Con. And it's fantastic. It's a big party. Tons of games are given away. Um, some beverages are consumed. There's some food to eat. And and often some, some silly party games get played there. Uh, I don't recommend it for gaming necessarily, but there's, some of that happens. A, a better convention for me for gaming is Origins, BGG Con, which I'm not going to this year, which I regret. But it's – anyway, schedule's time, all that sort of stuff. But Yeah, of course. But Bob, hopefully, listen, if you see me, though, feel free to say hi. I'd love to say hi, shake your hand, and maybe we can talk a little bit about the games that we saw. Same fact. I'm sure you feel the same way, right? Happy to say hi to people. Yeah, definitely. And on top of that, uh, if you really want to play a game and I don't have a lot of time, I will play the finger game with you anytime. And if you love to ask what that means. <laughs> that sounds bad. It's a, it's a real it's, game. That is really – listen, this is still family-friendly, even though it doesn't feel like it right now. <laughs> The finger game. You can come up with a different name for it. It's really fine, folks. It, it's, it's fine. What if we called it fingers? No, that's, that's just... Okay. <sighs> Mandy Law, question. How big is your collection? Uh, I should know the... <laughs> this time's a couple for you, Pep. Um, I have it all entered into BGG. I'm Pelvidar. P-E-L-V-I-D-A-R. And it, it's somewhere north of 300, I think. But that's expansions, too, mm. right? So... I'm at kind of my breaking point. I don't want any more games. I like to float just Except around 100. 100 is a <laughs> nice yeah, little, yeah. and, you know, I try to, when new things come in, I'll kind of push out things that I'm not playing anymore. I like to float I'll tell around you that, that number. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I'm the same way. Like, I have right now, my, uh, my shelves are full, and I'm happy. So new stuff that comes in, it's kind of like, okay, well, something has to probably leave. Um, I, that is one thing that has not changed over the last six years. I love, 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 open up a new game. Check out the components, read the rules. Still, oh, just as exciting. Maybe more. I think maybe even more now than it was when I first. I mean, started. I love punching components out. So yeah. when someone pushes out, someone actually <laughs> uh, got me a new or not, didn't get me. They had a new copy of Above and Below. We yes. sat down to play, and I got to punch out everything in Above and Below. And of course, you were in I tweeted, <laughs> "Oh, I get to play an unopened copy of Above and Below," and everyone had to be a joker about it. It was like. Well, how do you play it if it's unopened? Ah, but you, it was, internet, you. Yeah, but it was. I loved it. I love, especially a game like Above and Below, getting to sit there and, and pop out all the components. It was great. Most of like 2000 asks, why do you say Simon? Come on, is more accurate. Simon Games, I think they say Simon as well, don't they? Uh, Although it kind of doubles for Come On. Come On, it's, it's been back and forth. I've heard mm. them say both, but yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it just rolls off the tongue. Kenny Rodriguez asks, do you play any Star Wars games by any chance? Uh, Star Wars Destiny is probably the last game I was playing kind of actively, uh, although I haven't been playing it recently. I played Star Wars Rebellion recently for the first time with... Go ahead. I'm just going to suggest the weirdest game. You can oh. finish your thought. Who do you play it with? Uh, with Marty Canal from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. Right, and I played it with someone locally here too. Yeah. I'm going to suggest Star Wars Life, and that sounds really funny, but <laughs> if you played Life... In your youth, and you're like, I liked life, but it felt like I was just rolling and moving. Star Wars Life has a lot of choices and is actually really entertaining. He just wants to be a reviewer. No, no, but it's it's, it's such an old game. It's such an old I game. Guess I feel like I can review it. All right, fine. But Star Wars Life is strangely very enjoyable. <laughs> okay. I really I really love Star Wars Life. Well, there you go. Star Wars Life. <laughs> Watch it play it. Recommend. Stamp of approval. <laughs> Ooh, we should get a stamp of approval. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, so again, I'm going to skip any questions about, like, what do you think about this game or think about that game? I'm just going to jump by this, but uh, love you nonetheless. Uh, we love every game you mention. Yeah. <laughs> Stamp of approval. How do you sign for the... Uh, oh, uh, Wes, I think I'm going to answer this question already. How many people signed up for the, the big geek getaway trip, the one to Essen? Uh, right now, I believe the numbers are at seven. I think seven. it's seven right now. Uh, which is a good amount. I think we're aiming for 12. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a thing where we're going to have hordes of people. This is, you know, it's again, it's a big investment of time. You have to get time off work and all the rest of it. Um, but I, I, I'm hoping we get to. Get there's got to be a max number anyway. I, I don't know if there's a max number, but. Can't uh, have a thousand people on this tour. Can't have a thousand people. I, listen, you can't have a thousand. You're cut off. If you're a thousand and one, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, oh, uh, it, uh, oh, so uh, say for Mokhtar writes, again, I'm killing your name, apologies. Are you guys going to be at the, <laughs> okay, the shop and sit down uh, board game convention? No, but I, I listen, congrats to those guys. I think it's called Shucks or something. Shucks? Shucks, yeah. Well, Shucks, Shucks I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, Shucks. It's in Vancouver. It's in Canada, which is great. Love to see more conventions in Canada so I don't have to cross customs and it's a little cheaper probably to get But that's there. literally the <laughs> opposite is. side of Canada. Is, opposite. Exactly opposite. So it's, it would not be uh, – it wouldn't be an inexpensive trip. So that was not on the schedule right now. But I certainly wish them all the best. and I'd love to get out there in one of these years. I love their yeah. content. I watched it regularly. I listen to their podcast. I don't think I've ever run into the uh, Shut Up and Sit Down guys either. They are delightful. Yeah? I, yeah, I ran, I ran to them at, at Gen Con at one of the press things or whatever, and uh, really, really nice guys. All and, and at BGG Con, too. Yeah, no, I'd love to. Really nice guys. All right, so... Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm really scrolling down. Um, Amanda Panda wants to know, will we come down to the United States more often? Well, as time and opportunity and it makes sense allows, I mean, the thing is, uh, you know, we have to make fiscally responsible decisions too. Yeah, of course. And like we talked about before, we kind of are able to do a bit of a divide and conquer yeah, thing yeah, now. Like if there's, if there's two conventions that are pretty close together, we can, we can split up and be like, I'll Come go to on, one, man. you go to the other. Uh, and even with, with BGG Con, I'm going to BGG Con, but you. I'm not. I'm going to – sorry. <laughs> I, went, I went somewhere in my brain. I'm going to PAX Unplugged. Stay with me, Pat. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm going to, to PAX Unplugged. And, I mean, the, the other thing about the trips – and I, I love every trip I've taken. They've really all been oh, fantastic. Yeah, They're same. always a good time. Uh, but every time we're away, it's time we're not here making content. And that is kind of why you guys pay us and donate and support the show, right? So I feel like the trips – as long as I'm making a trip that is good – I feel it's helping the show, then I don't feel bad about doing it. Even if I'm spending some portion of the time there just relaxing, enjoying myself, as long as I'm doing Definitely. some work there as well, I feel like I'm, I'm not sort of betraying our supporters, if that makes some kind of yeah, sense. Yeah, and that's why it's great, because I can I can work from home while you're gone, you can work from right, home while Right, can cover gone. each other, which is helpful. Um, but I, I, I'm assuming by the question, you'd like to see us in the U.S. more often, so thank you. We'd love to be there more often. Um, okay. <laughs> we're back to the point where we were talking about Essen way, way back. So we're way back in the questions here. Oh, great. Uh, I have not, Brad, I have not played Castles of Callendale yet. Maybe it's time. Oh, it's, we're two minutes. I think it is time for speed round question and answering. I know you can. Let's bring, you need to be able to see better. Yeah, let's bring it closer. For okay. the I, I'm worried this will break the live show. By break it, I mean everything will just suddenly stop working. Uh, because technology. This is game delicate. is just so many pieces. <laughs> and, and you can pick up more. They, they can sell. They sell some separate. They actually, have no a, way. There is a custom wood version you can get a quote for, and they'll make wood pieces. But wood, how do the little things work? I that is a magic I do not understand. Uh, okay, I'm a little. We're so far away in the chat. Who knows? Scroll down to the bottom. I can't. Where did the chat go? Where is everybody? It's in YouTube. Okay, I'm going to the bottom, but I think we're not. I don't think we're there anymore. No, people are still talking. I think I, it's great. Okay, listen. In the chat, if you wouldn't mind, uh, would you please just say whether or not you can still see us? Because YouTube is telling us that the stream is not happening, and now it's saying it is happening again. So I think we're okay. I don't know if it's been intermittently cutting out. We did have a little yeah, problem with that. Yeah, even let us know if it's been intermittently Feel free. cutting out. Yeah. Uh, William, uh, look, I'm going to start at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, William Butel asks, is Luke going to play any games with you guys sometimes in the near future? Hopefully so. Uh, just has the schedule hasn't worked out. We haven't found the right game again, but there's no doubt he'll be back on the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's, a, he's, got, a, he's got a busy kid life. He does. His school and all the rest of it. <laughs> busy kid life. Yes, we can see you. We can still see you. Oh, so you many came yeses. back and we, and, you, and we see you. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for letting us know. I, I had a little mild oh, They, they did mention a pause for a second. So okay, so something happened there. But let's start from the bottom and go up and just thanks, Maggie. yes or no. Uh, Oh, here's somebody. Look, while we're handing out, uh, tr tr listen. I'm just I, I gonna go on your phone. I'm just gonna go, gonna go on my phone. Right. Uh, no pun included. Uh, has been in the chat making fun of me. I won't hold that against him. At no pun included on Twitter, YouTube channel reviews, excellent presentation. Check them out. Great, great, uh, great content. And also, while I'm here, Marguerite, Maggie Bot. Yep, yeah, Maggie Bot. At M A G G I B O T. Another Make great bot. content creator and all-around wonderful person. Uh, that's I, I do love the Twitter space, 
because it's, am I, am I, have I stopped answering questions already? I have. I love the Twitter space. It's a fun place to hang out with people you just can't see very often. You can see lots of board game pictures and content and people talking about things. It's, it's fun. If you're not on Twitter, I recommend it for board games. It's another way to tap into this hobby. I did actually run into somebody recently at the airport, and uh, he wasn't on Twitter. He, he's mostly into Instagram, and I said to him, you know, you should probably join mm -hmm. Twitter. And he's like, all right, sure, I'll do it. Okay, well, I mean, maybe you should have told everyone to join then. You yeah. seem very persuasive. Everybody, join Twitter. It's great. <laughs> Even if you're just there a little bit, you know, pop in every once in a while, say hi. Okay. Also, just in case, this game comes with a D20. <laughs> Unintentional D20. Unintentional D20. Okay, I'm going to answer this question because I can see Pokemon 1535 writes in all caps and exclamation marks. Please answer! Will you do a tutorial on Dark Souls, Dark, Dark Souls the board game? No. <laughs> that would be the answer in speedrun. We have not actually activated speedrun yet. Oh, I didn't uh, the, Boop! <laughs> uh, I do not pre-announce the games I'm going to feature. I, I've made that mistake in the past. And then... Seasons! Because <laughs> I'm And then sometimes... For stars. And then sometimes things happen to the schedule, and I don't get to it when I thought I was going to, and then I start getting messages... You said you were going to do this game. Why aren't you doing that game? And I don't mm. begrudge anyone who asks that because they thought I was going to do it. And they're just wondering, like, hey, how come that didn't happen? Did something happen? The only problem is once you've answered that question like 50 times, you start going, I should never have in the first place said that oh, I was going to do it. So right now I try to wait until I'm at at least the scripting stage. And then I might do a little tweet. Hey, get on Twitter to see it. Or on the Facebook page, or I'll make, make some reference to, like, hey, I'm doing this game next. Or, I love sneaking pictures while we're filming you'll, something. You'll sneak pictures sometimes, right. <laughs> okay. All right, so I don't know how we're going to do this because, I mean, I jumped to the bottom of the trap. The tra well, we're starting the from the bottom. We're going up, I think. Are we? Oh, because then everyone's asking. Okay, listen. I'm sorry. If you have a question to ask now, I guess you've been sort of effectively cut off. Um, uh, uh, question. Best uh, drink game combo by Jesse Bennett. I, I think you've jumped questions or something. I think. Well, there aren't no? any. No, I started with the first one from the bottom. Uh, uh, okay, no one probably is saying, watch it play. You should definitely give at Emily Lamb a shout out. I know that exact. Pain. That's not a question, I nor has the word question <laughs> at the start. I don't know if he's trolling. Listen, I don't know if you're trolling me anymore. I hope, hopefully that was good. Shout okay. out to everyone. Shout out to everyone. Everyone who's in this chat right now, you're all amazing, and thank you for being Josiah here. Josiah Bennett, best drink game combo. Uh, do a live show and drink? That's not what we're doing. This is grape juice. Um, I don't know. I don't... Uh, let's say... Oh, Codenames uh, can be kind of fun because it's challenging. Codenames is fun. Uh, last... What's that game? I just got it. I think it's on my... Oh, uh, it's on some other shelf. Well, that was a helpful answer. The new game I got. Okay, this is speed round. You don't have an answer. We move on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hardest game you had to teach. <laughs> top three games of yours. Won't give you the top three. Hardest game to teach would have been uh, bonkers. Uh, uh, Stronghold Second Edition. Yes. Because the rule book was a disaster, and Ignacy admits it. But uh, you know, still a game. The, the video uh, answer, solves the problem. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Worker placement or deck building. Go ahead. From Tony Simpkins. Deck building. Ah, that hurt. That hurts so much. Worker placement hurts me too because they're both. Like, it's hard to make a choice there. Okay. I want a worker placement deck building game. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Gon uh, Cola Kunha Neves writes Do you receive a lot of board game video content from people who want to contribute to watch it play? Is that something you'll consider in the future? I have had some people reach out and say, Hey, I'd love to partner with the show in some way. Would you be interested? And I've only said no, not because I don't like the content or whatever. I just, I'm not in a position right now where I want to form a network or try to manage other people's content and. My hands are full with my own stuff, I guess. It's hard enough when I give you ideas and you're just like, you can't do that, Pat. <laughs> That's right. But I always appreciate the people who have the interest. That's It's a, it's a compliment in its own way. Uh, okay. Uh, Adam Bishop says, how important is full disclosure to you when it comes to paid sponsored content for yourself and others? Because we're in speed round, I'm just going to say it's important. Very important. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a little bit situational, uh, unless it's a legal thing, in which case, do it all the time. All right. Uh, all right. Oh, people are doing a lot of these statements. <laughs> <instead of questions. laughs> we only accept questions here. Uh, okay. Amanda Panda wants to know, button down or t-shirt? Button down. Although I love the combo. My favorite no. is the t-shirt, the button up, and I love to roll up my sleeves. That's, just, that's a, my favorite. Buttons thing. all the way. The more when buttons, I, better. When I was younger, I, I used to do, instead of the triple fold, the triple fold will keep the sleeve up past the elbow. I used to do the one flip and I would pull. And I think... I did it. You're killing me. I know. It, it doesn't stay up, but I kind of liked the look of it, and I didn't mind that it slipped down. It gave me something to kind of like 
Yeah, it, pull it's my like sleeves. a nervous uh, precarious. It's a little, it's like a little something to do, and it's also like, hey, I'm pulling my sleeves off. Some people like, you know, getting down to work, I pull up my sleeves. I'm constantly getting, I must be getting down to work all the time because I'm very, constantly pulling up my sleeves. This is very Speed round. Okay. Uh, but I love button snaps, especially guilty pleasure snaps. Now, I do like the snaps too. It's easy to pull them off too. Not that I'm taking my shirts off all the time. I'm just saying, when it's time to take your shirt off, it's okay. It's so on. easy to make it happen. Okay, let's move it along here. All right. Uh, Plans for Gen Con? Yes. Racer Drago, you didn't put a question in front, but I'll, I'll give you one anyway. Have you ever played ta Tabletopia on Steam? I have played Tabletopia, but not on Steam. What was your question? Same. Oh, someone just said uh, plans for Gen Con, so I said yes. We do have plans for Gen Con. Yes. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, someone actually tweet like show. Oh, uh, Maggiebot actually showed Suzanne's full Twitter handle. So oh, that's helpful. Thank you, thank you, Maggiebot. Good team up. High five. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, I like this one. Okay, what do you Tony got? Tony Simpkins wants to know, who normally wins? You or Pep? <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> Every now and then I squeak out a win. Every now and then. Uh, all right. There's some games that you exclusively win, though. There's some games I've never beat you at. Uh, yeah, that's true. Like Imperial Settlers. Imperial Settlers. I've never yeah, beat that's you true. Imperial okay. <laughs> the, the Candle Princess wants to know, when playing games with young kids, do you ever let them win on purpose? Do you have an opinion on whether this is a good idea or not? Have I ever... Yes. Do I endorse or encourage it? Not as a practice, no. And there's literally a Table Talk episode about this. There is. There is a Table Talk episode. If you look in our playlist on our Table Talk, you'll probably find something about it. Letting kids win. <laughs> it's, not, it's about it's not kids and playing games with kids or whatever. Yeah. I think it's – I played uh, checkers with my grandfather growing up as a kid. He beat me every single time, and I love games to this day. Mm. Uh, I don't need – I think it's important to teach kids how to lose and to lose gracefully and not have that be the whole point of the game. Um, oh, I'm terrible at speedrun. I just Todd Adair. Love these questions. Oh, stop scrolling. Todd Adair, scroll down a little, just slightly. What is your favorite game called? Kemet says Miss Soli Two Thousand. Yes. All right. What was the? Uh... Uh, Todd Adair says, uh, when you win, do you have a victory dance? Especially when beating someone who would laugh at it. I don't have a victory dance, but I, I, I approve the victory dance. I think that's as long as you're not as long as you're not rubbing it in, like and being a jerk about it. I think. A fun victory dance could be okay. I definitely don't have a victory dance. No. I might have a loss dance more than a victory dance. I okay. like losing. Uh, okay, so, uh, so speed round will go for two more minutes because I've really bombed speed round already. <laughs> I'm sorry for being terrible at this. Uh, Jonathan Detmer wants to know what happened to pep talks. I think we kind of answered that already. It's just the schedule's full. We haven't been doing table talks recently or pep talks or anything that hasn't been sort of core content for the channel. We both like them, though. I we think. do love them. So we do love they'll them. They'll come back. And I hope that you enjoy them, too. Uh, and, and Nathan's asking the same thing. What are the odds for more table talks? Definitely, definitely coming. Uh, I actually had scripted a whole one. I had a whole idea. And then I looked at it, and I was like, I don't know that there's enough here. Always feel free to throw out suggestions yes. somewhere. Make us know. Like, let us know somewhere. I'll tell you a like great a place. If you go to the YouTube channel for Watch It Play, there is a tab called Discussion. And that's a great place to ask your sort of general questions. Sometimes I'll, I'll post near and far and someone will say, are you doing the Dark Souls video or whatever? And like, because I think people aren't used to people on YouTube answering questions. I answer all the questions. So move the question somewhere relevant, though. I always appreciate that more. So like just in the general dis discussion area, post it there on Facebook, on Twitter. Happy to try to answer the question. There. Yeah, we're definitely always looking for more ideas for Table Talks because we love doing them. Just keep in mind, if you have, if you think, oh, I've got a good idea for Table Talk, it has to be something we can talk about for a good 15 minutes and dig into and then propose other people to do it. So some of the suggestions I'll get are like, that's an interesting question, but it would fill up about 30 seconds. You yeah. know, it's, it's like, what do you think of the art on game boxes? It's like, well... Actually, just art in general. I probably do. Yeah, I don't think we've done an art one. An art one would be good. That's brilliant. Let's just talk about art. Please post that in the discussion I'll, tab on the YouTube channel. I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but so, like, uh, 2000 wants to know, can you pronounce the fairly calling game of gog gog ching wang jolly silly gog and gotch? No. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Um, okay, we're moving along here, and we're going to stop because we are at 1040. We're at 10.40. Well, you promised me a couple more minutes because you... I might... Uh, well, I, I went... I, there hasn't I, been questions in a while scrolling up. Okay. No, no. We've got a whole bunch. <laughs> oh, there's one. Uh, how many... Uh, Candle Princess. Well, here's the last one for you, Pep. How oh. many games have you designed, even if you haven't finished them yet? Uh, oh, including unfinished ones? Mm -hmm. uh, at least two dozen, then. Yeah, he's done a lot. But, like, finished is probably about six or seven. But, yeah, I have about two dozen 
where they're basically in the very like there's ideas and they're crunched together, but I need to put a lot more things like make the cards for them. I have them. played a surprising number of them that I've been like, Pep, you've got something here. There's something here, man. Yeah, like, I actually it's... really like I really like when you don't like one yeah. because it's good because usually you really like the ideas, but when you don't like one, it's like oh, Rodney usually just by default seems to like these. <laughs> right. So when you don't like it, it's like I should probably just grab this one. <laughs> this one is if this has triggered his like not like level threshold then there's there might be something there might be a problem here yeah okay listen everyone thanks for joining us for another ridiculous uh, live show uh, i really enjoy doing these I, I someday i'm going to start one of these and i'm going to be relaxed and calm and that feeling is going to persist throughout the entire he episode. was definitely not calm before this started <laughs> things are a little things are a little crazy anyway thanks for uh bearing with us and enjoying all this wonderful to hang out with all of you it feels like our, our fun little get together um so uh, until the next episode. I actually wish there was a screen where we could watch all the people watching. That sounds weird now that I say it. But I wish it was more <laughs> Listen, of Listen, you've done the finger game. You've done the watching. You want to watch people. We, can we get any weirder? I want it to be like a big group, you know? I know. it's because we Like a thousand-person Google chat. Listen, I'm going to mention something. If, you have, if you're in the chat and you've got like an L or a letter for your profile picture, maybe update it to a, an image of something. I'll tell you something. I don't remember everyone's name all the time, but I do That's see, true. if you comment regularly, I do see the, the, the avatars and I start to connect the people and I start to feel like I do know you know, some of the people who make up our, our little community here, and it's it's kind of a nice feeling. And that's a that's a real thing to talk about too, because when you go to shows, I, I run into people all the time. And first of all, I apologize to anyone that I've run into and don't remember you the next time I run into you. Right. I have an awful time with names, and as it is, yeah. and colors. <laughs> but I have an awful time with names, and so what's really interesting is you're running to people, and they'll be like, "Hey, I'm so and so off Twitter." And a lot of people on your Twitter don't even have your pictures and stuff. I know. So I'm guilty of this because mine just says watch it play. Now, I, my hope is that because we're a video show, people, people see, the, see face. the face. But like a lot of people, I, I might – before a convention, it's not a bad idea, at least temporarily, to switch your profile. I think it might have, that might have been even a Sue's, excuse me, suggestion along the way. Somebody did said that, and I thought it was a great idea. And people don't think of it. They go, oh, yeah. of course. Of course, I should put my face there because some people who I talk with all the time, they don't know what I look like, especially if you're a podcast. I'll often – I know there's been a couple of podcasts where, like, I think someone was offended because I didn't say hi or really engage. Like, I didn't even know who they were. Yeah, like, I knew their yeah. podcast. I listened to it all the time, but I didn't know their face when I saw it, right? And so – And I, I run into a lot of people, and I, it's something I've always had a hard time with in life in general is unless I hang out with running someone into like people. a dozen He's times. Very clumsy. Yeah. yeah, running into people. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's – Beware yeah, at a convention. Like, I love running into people and talking to people, but I, I have a bad memory when it comes to who people are, so. We did a great job saying goodbye and then not leaving. <laughs> That's my thing. I, I like to try to keep this as long as possible for everyone. Okay. But I think we're going to have to leave now. We have to go. Thank you guys. Uh, listen, what, what's the next content coming up? Maybe we can give a little tease of that. Um, Definitely Near and Far Part 3. Yeah, we're hopefully we're going to try to record that again at the end of this week. And Godfather. The Godfather instructional video, but that will release during the Tabletop Showcase, but I need to record that this week. Everything else, will come, I won't announce anything else. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you again. Wonderful to hang out. Let's do this again sometime soon. All right. Well, let's do like an official goodbye. Okay. Until <laughs> the next episode. Thanks, thanks for watching. watching. <laughs> we didn't even talk about how bad my wave is.